Beyond the Fairway Podcast, your home for all things swag in the game of golf. Your man Dougie Fresh alongside dreadheaded wonder Will Lowry. Will, I don't know where the hell you are right now. It's 115 in Phoenix, and you got on a beanie. What? What? Well, well, hold on. Where, where are you at? Where? Well, where, I, what are you I'm trying to thaw out, Doug, because I was at um, this wonderful event that Steph Curry uh, in in Aisha Foundation Eat Learn Play had. Uh, okay. In the in the Bay Area at Harding Park. Oh, okay. Um, I got it. it was, I got. Well, I, I want to touch on that, but but coming in here right soon and quick, fast, and in a hurry. Cheyenne Woods. We ain't talking about Tiger's niece. We're talking about the individual. We're talking about Cheyenne Woods coming in here, going beyond the fairway with Will and myself. But Will, work day, Steph Curry, eat, learn, play. What was that like, man? What's cracking? That's the only time I let you cut me off like that. But that was sorry. Right, you'll was, get over. I I get it. I get it. It was, we had, it was about business. But uh, yeah. So you know, it was uh, Workday put on a, a beautiful event for Eat Learn Play Foundation. Uh, Aisha and Steph Curry um, uh, Foundation. Their 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 bit their event. And it was at Harding Park. It was freezing. But they had the who's who out there. They had the who's who. They had Peyton Manning, Phil Mickelson, Brett Snedeker. Um, Basically, they had everybody who wrote their checks. That's mm. what made it so. That's what made it so uh, illustrious. Right. It wasn't so much the guys that we see on illustrious. TV. Illustrious. Wow. They, you hey, you gonna keep trying to us today? Keep I'm, on. I'm, try, I'm enjoying this. Keep I'm on enjoying. trying my vocabulary, bro. Keep I'm not on trying. trying my, I'm, in, I'm impressed. Keep, I enjoy yeah, it. I love yeah, when you okay, open it. Okay. Well. Okay. Go ahead, do, all right. Do a cool, score. Cool. Okay. I, I don't know another word. I ain't read one this week. <laughs> so anyway. Um, so, but it was it was a good event. But the whole thing is, I realized is that San Francisco doesn't have a summer. Like, I went and played with Steph back in July. We played at Cow Club. I was freezing. I was like, okay, maybe it's a late, it's a late, uh, it's a late spring. Summer hasn't hit yet. I am in the heart of summer. And I have back not, well, backside of summer. It's but I have not seen the sun in San Francisco. So I went to the clubhouse of Harding Park, and I spent $252 to keep warm. And you so probably now got I'm, that hat only for two. I, I got that. <laughs> <laughs> this hat was this hat was a third of it right here. That's why I'm rocking. I'm getting all of this in here. So now, um, so now uh, I'm I'm back in L.A. A little hot, but I'm still just trying to thaw out. And I am talking to you, and we doing beyond the fairway, cool. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't know what you did yesterday, but I stayed up. Well, I, I should have said I got up watched the finish to the BMW championship. Our homie, mm-hmm. our our you know, Billy Horschel had stepped in here, gone went beyond the fairway with us. We got that W man. Like Absolutely. And for him to not get the Ryder Cup nod, then go win. I feel like that was like an almost middle finger to Steve Stricker. Like you ain't picked me, well I just beat half the Ryder Cup team for the Europeans. What's up? Right. What's correct? Right. You should you know he can't get an alternate spot. And, 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 and the thing about it, man, you know, I, I because Billy came on I have a little bit of a, of, uh, I have a little bit more love for Billy than than the other, you know, other players. Fair. But fair. I, I, I'm I'm proud of what he did because he beat, he beat majority of the guys on the European team who are on the Ryder Cup. You know, so a lot of the guys are going to Whistling Straits. It's just unfortunately, Whiz, uh, Billy going to be whistling past Wisconsin going home. <laughs> but it was it was it was. Uh, that's unfortunate, man. I, and 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 I have a little beef with a couple of the captains. You know, Project Harrington and the way he uh, he he took on his his captain role. He, he already back in May said he was picking Sergio and Ian Poulter. You know, and and uh, those guys those guys already got the nod before everybody else. And but is it a Ryder it, Cup without Ian Poulter banging on his chest? Is it? Well, the way, the, the, here's a question. He's like, here's, he's like no, 58 but here, now. So. Here's, here's, he is about 58. <laughs> but here's a question, though. Here's a question. How, how, how much loyalty do you have with players when you're that Ryder Cup captain? Like, how, how, how far can loyalty go with particular players versus, you know, you're doing something for the country and you have to do something for the betterment of the country, so your country can win. And I, I thought that was a little funny. But, I mean, Sergio got the Sergio has the record to back it up. Ian Poulter has the record to back it up uh, when it comes to uh, you exactly. know, team play. So I feel like when you look at we'll Ian see. Poulter's resume, right, he's won he's won a few times. The only one I can really think of off top was the shell that, I, that he won mm-hmm. with most recently. But it's something different when you're playing on that team 
as a European. You know what I mean? It is. Ian Poulter it is. has always rose to the occasion. Is it rose? Rised? I don't know. Raised? Whatever. He's always showed up. I don't know which right. word to use there. Right. Uh, he's always showed up. He's always played well. He's gotten some W's. So, and you know what? Padraig Harrington wants to run the damn team how he sees fit. Good. That's my attitude. Right. Look, I'm picking right. these two riding with me. We up out of here. I, I mean, I don't, I, I don't hate it. I, 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 you know, when you think about it, I think it's a little premature. But when you think about Sergio, he is, he has the most Ryder Cup wins, 25 and a half points in European history. So European the fact that you knew team that, history. I, I, well, I enjoy well, that you knew that. Well, That's I nice. appreciate that. You know, I'm, I'm learning about this study and research thing. So, well, I tell you what, let's go edge. ahead and study and research and get into this Cheyenne Woods conversation because guess what? It's coming at you right now. Well, let's go Beyond the Fairway, Cheyenne Woods. Beyond the Fairway podcast. Man, I am so excited. Will, we have probably one of my favorite people. And if it wasn't for the lady in the other box, Will, I probably wouldn't even have a voice in the golf industry. Cheyenne Woods, join us right here, Beyond the Fairway. Shy, what's happening? Hey, how are you guys? Thanks for having me. C Dub is in the building. I'm here. Um, I, you know what? I just want to get off into it. First Tiger, <laughs> first, first Tiger Woods question. <laughs> oh my God! Right, right off you the would bat. start. Okay, with come on, come on, first it. Tiger Woods question. <laughs> uh, no, nah, it's not really a question. I just want to know how often do you get upset and bothered? Do you cringe when you, when you get Tiger Woods questions all the time? I, I wouldn't say I cringe. I mean, part of me goes into like like robot mode of just automatic answers. <laughs> I think the cringiest thing that people might say to me or ask me is tell Tiger I said hi. And I'm like, <laughs> I will not do that, but I appreciate you know the thought. So <laughs> that's probably the cringiest, but I get people are excited. Tiger is a huge figure in golf. So I try not to hold it against them. Do, do you ever, do you ever get to the point where you may be at home on a couch eating your popcorn and you see a lot of people maybe dig into Tiger a little bit. Cause you know, Doug and I here on Beyond the Fairway, we don't, we don't, we don't hold back. We, we, we yes. give it to your uncle on, on occasion, but <laughs> is there ever a time where you're like, Oh no, he didn't talk about my uncle. Or are you just kind of, you know, step back and just listen, do you, do you hold a grudge? No, a grudge. I mean, Strong. I take Strong notes. Way. I definitely take notes. Who said what? But Ooh, I understand, nice. obviously, golf is something that you're going to be critiqued on. Um, but when you are related to somebody or close to somebody, it's hard not to get offended when you hear people saying stuff. Um, I think the most difficult position to be in, and I've been in this position a few times, is when people don't realize that I'm related to Tiger and then they have their commentary about him. And, you know, your heart starts to raise, your blood is boiling, but sometimes it's just not worth the time. So I just try and say something nice and then <laughs> keep it moving <laughs> yeah i mean i feel like shy every time we've been around each other i i hate when you get introduced as tiger's niece they really that's the worst like that's, man i'll be wanting can to I, like clear out the people and be like really quick come on it's just your story. time <laughs> that's it i'm not gonna say what tournament it was but i was playing an <laughs> lpga tour event um as a member i'd been on tour for x amount of years and after I hit my first tee shot, I was walking off the tee and the starter got on the microphone and said, and for those of you who don't know, Cheyenne is Tiger Woods' cousin. And no. I was like, well, first of all, not only did you get the relationship wrong, but why would you need to say that? Right. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. Hey, right. hey so, well, that's when she hit him with the side eye roll with the hair flip over, like, hold on, who the hell yeah. is talking yeah. all of this right now i'm sorry brian there's a beep coming my bad my bad Sh shy real quick you've, you've had an interesting maybe last couple seasons let's start on the golf side of things like what is i'm seeing you on broadcast i'm seeing you playing tournaments how are you playing where are we going to see you next how are you managing life yeah you're right i have done a little bit of both the last few years obviously covid was a weird year last year i played what i could um, but going into this year, I've played a handful of events, um, LPGA and Symmetra events. Um, and I did some work with Golf Channel, which has been awesome, working with mm. um, them and doing some USGA events, working with the girls' amateur events, NCAAs. Um, so it's been nice, honestly, to have the balance because I've always been interested in TV, media, broadcasting world. Um, so for me to be able to play, compete, 
and then two weeks later go and talk about golf, talk about the sport that I love and try to give these girls a, a platform to showcase what they can do, I think has really been a, a nice balance for me. So I yeah. really enjoyed it. And um, like you guys mentioned, I'm playing next week, so I'm excited for that. So it's kind of nice to hit the best of both worlds, I guess. You know, Cheyenne, I, I want to go a little deeper. Shout out to Molly Solomon for formulating a good team, obviously. Um, but I want to know, you know, when it comes to this, the, the broadcasting and maintaining a, a, a well uh, uh, intact golf game, how, what are you doing for it? Like to, to, for your emotional fitness? Cause we see on Instagram, you and physically you're fit, you're getting in shape, but from emotional fitness standpoint, how are you, how are you maintaining that balance? What are you doing to, uh, to, to stay steady? Um, I think as I just kind of just finding that balance. Um, and for me, you know, juggling both, you kind of have to have your foundation of what keeps you sane. Um, when right. you're traveling all Where the time at? and you're being pulled in different directions, you really have to have that foundation, that rock solid place that you can always go back to. So for me, I mean, I've always been an advocate for like therapy or med uh, meditation. Um, so for me, kind of finding my outlets to do that type of stuff has been nice to, um, I guess, be able to do that and do oh, everything. Okay. <laughs> so, so basically, so go ahead, go ahead, Doug. I would say basically you're just talking about the, um, the volunteer of America commercial that's been running for <laughs> 18 years and, yes. and steady running. <laughs> yes. Shout out to volunteers of America. <laughs> Open event in Texas. They always do great things in the community. And oh, smart. nice way to recover. Yes, yeah, she, I love she it. She spun out of that quick. I mean, <laughs> you know, as she's preparing for her events, Will, we do know that she practices her full swing two hours a day and her yes, game, yes, short and, game and, two hours a day. And then absolutely. I don't know what she does the rest of the time. <laughs> absolutely. Because there's, there's a lot you of time what, left in the day. <laughs> it, it is. I just wish, I just wish they'd do it a, another version to change the shoes i was like i was like man that was old 15 right there that's the old shit that's the Classic. old roy mcelroy vintage. vintage if you like what you like and you know they're comfortable so absolutely <laughs> now, Cheyenne, have you had to like what i, I don't want to say you're transitioning but are, are you are you beginning to kind of set up your next career right now are you still like is it still 100% golf. I know you got some other endeavors and things you're working on, but like as far as career goes, I know a lot of people ask me, hey, when are we going to see Cheyenne again? Where's she at? What's happening? Like, what's your mm -hmm. response to kind of everybody looking at you like, well, what the hell is she doing? Um, yeah, I've gotten that question a lot too. <laughs> and um, for me, I think honestly, you know, I've struggled on the golf course a little bit um, as emotionally as we just talked about, Will. And so for me, even before COVID, I was just thinking about how can I, how can I find ways to realize that my life is more than just competing and results and adding to the golf resume. Um, and so I tried to brainstorm what else do I love? And I loved like podcasts, you know, uh, Doug and I, we did our podcast. Um, I love TV. And so trying to branch out and filling my life with those things other than just the stress, because it is stressful, you know, playing on tour week to week, you know, missing a cut, making a cut, um, the highs and lows emotionally was a lot for me to deal with. So I really had to fill my life with other things that I love to do. Um, and I love golf and I love other aspects of golf. So during COVID, you know, I brainstormed and I did want to kind of get into the TV realm of things. So this last year, this season um, of working with Golf Channel has really been a fun experience for me to get a taste of that side of things. So when when you talk about when you talk about this you know, this journey of you know entering into broadcasting, you know when you think about women in sports, you know majority of women in sports they 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 stand for something. You know we talk about Billie Jean King, she stood for uh, gender equality. Naomi Osaka is um, uh, uh, is standing for mental health. Mm -hmm. What is what is Cheyenne Woods standing for? as she takes a journey or this new road? I think finding your own identity in whatever it is that you're doing. Um, and I think that is, it kind of goes along the same theme of what these athletes are talking about in terms of mental health, Simone Biles, Naomi Osaka, um, of finding your identity. Yes, we are excelling at the sport and super successful and talented, um, but it's not your identity. And I think that's what creates a lot of anxiety and stress and tension when you're out competing or even 
after competing, looking at results, um, but finding your own identity in what you're doing and outside of what you're doing um, is something that I try to speak on because it's something that I struggled with going through my career, especially having the last name of Woods made it hard you can't, um, get, so away from that, you can't yeah. get away from nothing <laughs> <laughs> so i really had to go through that journey of finding that um of who i am other than the last name of woods and other than being a golfer mm. now let me look, you said something earlier that i, I kind of want to go deeper on shy you and don't let me put words in your mouth but at some point were you attaching self-worth to like golf on course performance yeah, definitely. Um, and I don't know if everyone has been there, but um, I know. <laughs> I doubt that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you alone but there. I so. know right. <laughs> a lot of professional golfers have felt this way because I have the conversation with them all the time on tour. Um, golf is very results oriented, you know, and so it's hard not to attach that to yourself. You know, you put in all this hard work and go out and you don't perform. Um, what's wrong with me? You know, what am I doing wrong? Um, so definitely had that phase of feeling like um, I'm not performing. Something is wrong with me. I don't know. You mm -hmm. panic, you know, because this is your dream that you're living out on tour. And it somewhat is result oriented because I have to play up to a certain standard to keep my job. Um, yeah. So you kind of have to just, I don't know, figure that stuff out. <laughs> I don't know how you do it, but I know I've seen you on I've seen you on both coasts in the last eight days. So I don't know how you, you've been managing. But Shai, yeah. you're, you're heading yeah. up to the Cambia Portland, Portland Classic uh, there on the LPGA this season. And it's going to be great to see you back in the rope. So, you know, I'm going to say now, play well. But years ago, I want to say 2017, correct me if I'm wrong, that tournament hosted the most women of color ever on an LPGA Tour event. It was you, Mariah Stackhouse, Ginger Howard, uh, and Sedina Parks. What did it mean to you being on campus that day at that event? Did it feel a little bit more like home? Was it something that you all recognized? Like, oh, hold on, we out here right now. Or, or <laughs> how, how was that experience? And, and what was there a miss via promotion uh, from the tour? So I would say I have to start with um, growing up. I never saw women of color playing on the LPJ tour. I knew of Renee Powell. I knew of Larae Suggs, um, obviously Althea Gibson. But during my era of growing up and watching golf, there was never a woman of color playing on tour um, until Shasta Avery Hart, I believe in 2010 or 2011. Um, and so for me to be on tour those first few years, it was Sedina Park and I, and it, it felt special, even just the two of us, because it had been so long since there had been any type of black woman on tour. Uh, when we were playing in Portland and there were five, was it five? Mariah, myself, Sedina, Ginger. Was it four or five? I don't know. Ginger's, but sister, it was, four. Ginger's, Ginger's sister caddied four. So it probably right. felt like so it was, it was five on a course before we're playing. Yeah. Right. So four <laughs> of us were playing and it felt special. Um, we all knew each other. We all go way back to junior golf, have been following each other's career, supporting each other. Um, and it felt like a moment to me. And so I was the one who was like, all right, come on, let's get this picture because this is cool. Um, to me, it just is so important to have that because, like I said, when I was growing up, I didn't have it. And I've had girls come out to tournaments watching me play and they're little black girls who've never played golf before but came because I have curly hair and it's just little things like that that connect to fans connect to young golfers and so to have a moment like that I thought was really special it wasn't talked about a lot at the time and I think maybe just the conversation in society wasn't happening mm. um, so it wasn't really on people's radars whereas today or even last year, it's definitely on the radar of people of having representation in every aspect of sport or society. Um, so yeah, at the time it wasn't talked about, which 
mm-hmm. whatever. I mean, it is what it is. We knew it was special, and I put it on my Instagram. So um, it was unfortunate. That's how you know it's special. Nice that, yeah. Right, yeah. exactly, exactly, on the <laughs> IG. On the ground, so. <laughs> well, um, so some of the up-and-comer uh, uh, young black women who are playing golf, how have you incorporated the things that you have learned in your experience? Uh, for example, I B- Bailey Davis, you know, how have you Love mentored her? her and you know in the conversations you guys have had i definitely try to connect with the girls that are up and coming um i played a practice round at the u.s open with amari avery um even if it's just reaching out via social media like when um bailey was playing in the usga event i reached out you know we, we post we message we support um and that's all you really can do is show that you're so show that you're supporting know that they can reach out if they ever need something. Yeah. Um, and I think that that goes a long way just in itself to know that Absolutely. we're out here watching, supporting, and you're not there alone. Like we've been there, we know what you're going through um, and we're always here to cheer you on. I, I, I you more, know what? There's more support though nowadays. There's more girls out. I feel like there's a, the pipeline for females might be a little deeper than the male pipeline in the people of color space. Could be wrong. Uh, you you wrong. might be right. You might be right. You you might be right about that, Doug. I wish Sh- Shahe ain't never supported me though when I was playing my little mini tour events. I ain't get no. I ain't get no <laughs> damn Whoa. good luck. I, got you. I, got I you. remember. <laughs> hey, I do remember one time I was at a. Hey, I do remember Shahe. I don't know if you remember this, but I was at a um, a PJ Latin tour event with Willie, and I think um, you and Willie were talking, and Willie said, "Yeah, I'm right here uh, with Will. He plays golf." <laughs> Oh, I was like, I was like, I was like, damn, I was like, damn. So yeah, so somebody lying. I think it's, I, <laughs> I think it's because we just missed each other, like with our ages, maybe. Right. And so I just didn't yeah. know everything about you at the time. Right, 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 so, right. You know, I, I caught what, up real quick, though. I yeah, yeah. I, I think, the, I think the actual quote, Doug. What's he doing there? I think that was a real quote. Oh, <laughs> why you trying to call me out like that? Because hey, I, because I, I, I'm just trying to. Hey, this is therapy for me right now. So I, I think, I think <laughs> I'm done. it all out. Okay. Hey, Shad, talking about what's he doing there? I'll switch the words up a bit and talk about what is she doing there? Because last year you caddied for an individual at the Diamond Resorts. So you actually, as an LPGA player, went to an LPGA event, but not as a player, as a caddy. How the hell was that experience? Um, Who'd you I caddy for? Everything. Ab- <laughs> okay, so I caddied for Mr. Aaron Hicks. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> me, 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 me. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's big news. Yeah, it's, um, it's blushing? Wait, is she blushing? Yeah, yeah she's blushing. She, she just did the, uh, oh, the, the, uh, the white girl's shoulder shrug. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, back to the question. Right, back to the question. Um, <laughs> so I have to be honest. I loved everything about the experience other than carrying the golf bag. Um, you know, obviously okay. caddying, you do have to carry the bag, which I understood the assignment. But I needed to tell my player that we only need five to six golf balls. Um, <laughs> there was one And by point player, you mean Aaron Hicks that. only needed only needed some yeah. more. Just Aaron. There was you one only needed point five in the tournament where yes, right. There was one point <laughs> where the bag was just weighing me down. I'm like, I know I'm stronger than this. I walk, I work out. So I opened it up and there were twenty golf balls in the bag <laughs> that he just kept throwing in there. Every day he'd throw a sleeve. Every day he'd throw a sleeve. And um, so I loved everything about it other than that part. Um, <laughs> it was actually nice to be there and not be the center of attention, not be the person who's being interviewed and taking pictures of. So I actually really like that. So hold on, people didn't like, I, I, I find that hard to believe. Like I find that hard to believe, Shy. Like nobody rolled up on you like, so Cheyenne, what the hell are you doing with a bag on? Like, But I, I tell you this though, I tell you this Doug, they, they absolutely respected Hicks because the stuff that she didn't see, I was getting. They were like, hold on, is that, is that, Oh, that's oh, that's Tiger Woods' niece. How how would how did they know each other? Yeah, I'm like, man, I, yeah, like, and, 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 don't and the thing about it, I had to keep it secret. Like, I said, I don't know how they know each other. Are they dating? I don't know. I have no clue. Ask keep them. That. I don't know. No. <laughs> Check Twitter. 
Check right. <laughs> but no, look, okay, so look, all right, here's an interesting kind of dynamic, right? You have the, the girlfriend LPGA star, and you got the baseball guy that's playing in a professional golf event. What what advice are you going to give Hicks for next year? Because you you had that up close and personal, like you – does he need to hit less drivers? Like, is is his mental all the way together? Shy? How do we make? How do we get him across the finish line next year? I think honestly, that's one of the hardest parts about caddying is understanding your player's game. And I've played a lot of golf with Aaron, but we do play golf very differently. So when it comes to tournament golf, it was hard to translate his game to tournament. It was his first like tournament, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, So to translate his game to tournament golf, like course management, and then incorporate my course management strategies and how I play and trying to be smart and when to attack was really hard. So you don't miss fairway. So it had to be very difficult for you. Exactly. And he's kind of (laughs) all over the place. So, um, but he hits it a mile. So it's just very different types of golf um and he needs to work on a short game a little bit so we're gonna work on that but other than that i mean i think he's he's gonna take it next year mm, sorry Shia. i'm, I'm watching like... will fighting this son that he's trying no, to no no bro and it's hysterical will... <laughs> <laughs> will's trying to get lit and he's over here like dodging it stepping oh, <laughs> over there getting it getting <laughs> yeah, that that was uh, I'm getting I'm getting crushed, man. My retina is fried right now. <laughs> hey, Sha, what is, what are the oh, keys man. though to to so you you have a tournament in a few days. What are the keys yeah. that you have to do to get? I mean, luckily you don't miss fairway, so that's great. Good for you. You're, everybody yeah. else is jealous. But how do you how do you? <laughs> there are t- there's a lot of time off now from the game. I'm assuming for you. And then you got to, like, put the golf hat back on. Like, what is it that you do to get back ready for the game? Um, You know, obviously, my preparation just here at home of playing and practicing and doing what I feel I need to do on the course to feel ready to Hold on, Cheyenne. Cheyenne. Um, Cheyenne. Cheyenne. I got to stop you on that. You say you're playing in preparation. I don't know if Doug, you already asked the question, but what is that exactly? I mean, can you take me to a take me to a day? I want, yeah, I mean, I you have two hours for your short game. So, like, what are you doing in that two hours? <laughs> for? Okay, first of all, that was filmed, like, five years ago. So, some <laughs> things have evolved. <laughs> um, hold on, Shai, real I've quick. Will, gonna... hold on, real quick, real quick, Shai, real quick. Hold on. Because <laughs> I think this is hysterical. So, when that, when that commercial does run, mm-hmm. Cheyenne gets people that will DM her and be like that's why the internationals are kicking our ass because you're only practicing for four hours a day (laughs) (laughs) okay but have you heard i mean i think i I think it was either rory or jordan but they said they don't really practice that much yeah yeah i don't think harold i I don't think harold practices a lot either obviously it just comes down to efficiency and that's what i've learned in my professional career because i used to be like I used to think because I was there for X amount of hours that I put in a lot of work. But if you're not focused in your practice and have goals and actually have a plan of what you're going to do that day, you're really not accomplishing much other than just going through the motion. Um, So you could be way more productive in an Mm. hour and a half of doing a very focused drill and planned practice versus just beating balls for four hours with blisters on Mm. your hands. And you really don't know what you accomplished that day. So that is one thing I try to tell juniors is like, have a goal when you go out to practice, have a plan. You don't need to break your back out there on the, on the golf course all day, but be efficient with your time. Oh, that, yeah. that's, that's good that, advice. Boom. That's actually, you that, that was, <laughs> you dropped the mic on us Thank too. You. <laughs> <laughs> I see how that is, man. Shot, no, look real quick, only because. You know, I know that you've had some time over on the on the European tour, ladies European tour. Oh, I heard a story that you and Henny, then Zool, would get like confused. Um, people would think she was you and you were her. Like, is that um, is that frustrating, or is it just we need to educate people on what 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 black women look like? <laughs> I think we need to educate a little bit because it's not. Yes, Henny and I got mixed up a lot and i mean i could maybe see it we're the same skin tone we have a golf club in our hand it's confusing oh she was Um, a niece she was a niece yeah (laughs) but you know i get it all the time you know there's only so many of us on the golf course um that are women of color brown skin black skin 
Um, but sometimes it's like, if you get me and Mariah Stackhouse confused, something is, is wrong because we don't attention. look alike. Just because we are black women on the golf course doesn't mean we all have the same name. And um, I know a lot of the girls get called my name or Mariah's name. And it's just like, there are different people in this space and we all have a name. We're not all the same person. So I think it's just people paying attention and um, just being aware of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, I, I find that, <laughs> yeah, you, you and Mariah, that, that's tough. Um, so they, they are, they are twins. They both hit the ball a long way. Mariah's pretty, she hits the ball pretty long way, right? She's, she's pretty far, right? She does. Mariah is. Is she longer yeah, than Sedina? She is she, far ooh, and is she, she's straight. No, she's not. She's not longer than Sedina, but um, Sedina she like lasers it. Yeah, like, I so. wish I could. I hit a lot of fairways, but I wish I could hit it like Mariah because she just lasers in on every target. Mm. Wow, that's that's right. high praise yeah. right there. That's <laughs> high praise. Cheyenne, we wish you all the luck coming up that? this week. What? I, look, you've played there before. What are we going to see from the from the course from you? This week, like, how, how are you going to get this W? Let's, let's just talk, forget everything else. How are you get this W? <laughs> right. So I do have to say, this is my favorite event on the LPGA schedule. Let's go. That's a good start. Um, I love Portland. <laughs> I love Portland. Um, I've actually had my best finish ever at this event. Um, but we're at a new golf course this year. So I've oh, never really? played it before. It's new for everybody. So mm -hmm. um, I don't really know what to expect. Um, but I do have to say, I have a very surprisingly new caddy um, in Andres Gonzalez. So what? I'm excited to see. Oh, whoa, <laughs> oh, oh, the mustache guy? The mustache guy? Yeah, Wait a minute. So. <laughs> how he get, uh, you gotta, you gotta go deep. How did he get that job? How, how the hell did he get that job? Did Honestly, he... Um, he's, he DM'd me on Instagram. Oh, oh, he got, oh, he got um, the DMs, I see. Got oh, Aaron. Oh, Aaron. <laughs> no, let's end this right here. It's right here. It's not like that. <laughs> hey, but you know, no, we, you know what? Um, Go ahead. I was going to say, we have a very close mutual friend. Um, and I used to be sponsored by MGM Resorts, which he is on the team. So we've gotten to know each other. He lives in the area. And um, just reached out to see if I needed a caddy and a friend to be out there on the course. And I said, nice. Hell yeah. <laughs> I love that. I love it. Hey, so hold on. Before before we go, I don't know if we're about to wrap up and then we're getting close in your time. Uh, I want to know, is there anything that Aaron, you know, given the fact that Aaron is a, a huge baseball player, he knows all about mental toughness. He knows all about, you know, going through the grind and grit. Has he said anything to you about, you know, just the grind the sticking sticking to it you know going through the trials and tribulations what kind of what kind of information has he provided you um i would say the biggest thing is just trusting your ability like no matter how you're playing or whatever lull or thing you're going through you really just have to trust like you're there for a reason you know you're capable um, and to just get it done, just go out there and do what you do. And that's what I love in talking to other athletes, especially in, you know, baseball, basketball, football, they're kind of like intense, high speed, um, Absolutely. very different from golf. Um, but I mm -hmm. love talking to athletes like that. So when I talk to Aaron, it's very similar to that of just trust it, go out there, do what you do and beat everybody. Man, <laughs> because Aaron had her ass doing two days in the gym. That's 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 the other thing that yeah. nobody tells me. Yeah. <laughs> Cheyenne doing two a day. Hey, and right here, it. Beyond the Fairway exclusive. <laughs> Cheyenne Woods is doing two a days in the off season, getting ready. So don't sleep on Shy. Shy, look me, 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 all the best of luck. Uh, Will, I'm I gotta let her go, man. So you got anything? Are we not else? doing? Hold on, hold on. We're not going to ask no rap for some. I mean, oh, are we, yeah, are right. we, we so it. let me do it oh, since you forget. Hey, forget. Cheyenne, I'm just hoping you would do it. I got it. Cheyenne, this is what we do with every guest. We ask them about their rap foursome dead or alive. Who would you pick to play with you? You can be the fifth person if you want who are dead or alive. Who would okay. you pick to be in your rap foursome? Oh, geez. I know. Um, you see, we probably so should have told Cheyenne this head, beforehand. <laughs> off the top of my head. Um, I would probably say Snoop. So Snoop, I'm thinking okay. of people who I think would be fun and interesting to play with. I don't really, their music, Perfect. whatever. I like yeah. rap music right. regardless. Right. So right. Snoop, 
Okay. Um, I think I would throw Kanye in there because Ooh. I think he'd be really interesting to talk to. Mm. Um, huh. Good or bad, you know, it could go either way. Okay. Why, um, Why? Okay. <laughs> You don't have the answers, Cheyenne. You don't have the answers. <laughs> Kanye. Yes, so Kanye, Snoop. Um, maybe Jay-Z. I'll probably throw Jay-Z in there because he okay. might bring Beyonce. Um, ah. <laughs> You know, I feel like she's got a fan that somebody. Yeah, I, 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 I think I think hire somebody to have a fan blow wind on her as she walks down the street. Right, right. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, who? Uno mas, I, shot, I uno know. mas. I, 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 I'm surprised you ain't said this one light skinned individual, but uh, I'm, I'm, this is your, this I know. Is your rap I'm like kind of over your... Drake. <laughs> <laughs> That's an, me, 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 me. That's an exclusive. I got ever since he tried to post that picture of him playing golf with two gloves, two baseball gloves on. Right, and, I a, think and I a wave cap. Respect for his and a wave, golf yeah. Ability. Well, right. yeah. I, I get hey, Brian, go ahead and put that um, right here. Thank you, sir. Yep. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, okay. So I'm not even gonna have another rapper. I'm just gonna throw Rihanna in there. And okay, um, Riri. Okay. Yeah. And that's yeah, she might she might can make a women's uh, golf line. Ooh, she could they have one, but like a like some a fancy golf. Like a like yes, fancy some... golf collection. <laughs> yeah, but you couldn't and wear it, Cheyenne. So I don't even know. She could and, collab and you know, with Nike. Collab nice. with Nike, although she's with Puma. But you know, but you know what though? Change. But you know what though? <laughs> if she's playing with you guys, she's gonna have everybody work, 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 work. Did that joke, did that joke land? <laughs> okay, that joke might uh, It was, right, it was so very close. On that note. <laughs> <laughs> oh, y'all just went, oh, y'all just went birdie not BS on me. Okay. Yeah, we are. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Giant, it is good to be back on the mic with you. It has been too long. Um, but, you know, we'll let Will sit over there and cry under his umbrella. Ella, I'm get a. <laughs> Cheyenne, oh, that thank was you a good so one. much going beyond the fairway right here. <laughs> Golf yes. Channel, NBC Sports, Dougie Fresh, Will Lowry. Good luck this week and all the best. We'll holler at you. I'm sweating, Thanks, boy. Woo! Oh, he took his hat off. <laughs> on camera. Woo! Oh, it's on camera. Uh, I, I'm out here. I'm out here baking, cuz. Uh, no, why you gotta zoom in, Brian? Why you gotta <laughs> zoom in, bro? Get me off the zoom. Get uh, get me off the zoom, B. <laughs> you know, you know, y'all not got hats for days. What y'all talking about? There it is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you smell something cooking, it's me, because I'm getting rocked right here. <laughs> there you have it. We got the great niece of Tiger oh, Woods. Man. No, see, I know. See, I... <laughs> we got Cheyenne Woods that just came through. We had a great conversation. You know what? I, I really have to appreciate Cheyenne for, you know, provide insight on, you know, how does she see herself in the next five years, you know, you know, in the broadcasting? And I love the fact when you think about the overall ethos, the overall ecosystem of golf, and I love how she's positioned herself. You know, she's got she's really, you know, uh, making a solid foot, footprint in the game. And I think that's something a lot of young women can look up to. I mean, I don't have to be no, a woman, sure. but I got long hair and I still look up to it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, she said something very interesting, though, Will. And, and I, I think a lot of people underestimate the power of representation. Mm, um, absolutely. When you can see someone in, a, in an arena that you can say looks like me or I can do that, you can gravitate toward that. Um, and I think, you know, Cheyenne and I have had many conversations previously. I mean, we do have over 100 episodes of another podcast, but we, we've had conversations about just her hair texture has gained her uh, fans, has gained her you know, little girls that want to come out to the golf course and follow Cheyenne because, and she said it, her hair, their hair matches. Um, it's just one of those things where people really need to understand that representation and um, having people that you think you can be like one day, you need those people everywhere within the game of golf, right? So you mm -hmm. need people like us on here talking about the game. People like Cheyenne uh, talking and playing the game and the Shastas and the Mariahs and Sedina, come back to golf. I know you Hollywood and, and business lady now, but come back to golf. You are needed. Um, it just It's one of those things where I think you and I have, have talked about it as well, where we wanted to be you know, in, in a situation where kids could look up to be us you know, as golfers. But hey, kids, you can be podcasters I, now. I, 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 you can be podcasters. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember, like I, I remember, I say it all the time. Uh, when I was on Big Break and, you know, the two seasons I was on there, 
I used to get asked to do a lot of, you know, I called a big break tour. I went to a lot of first tees and spoke and, you know, mm -hmm. did speaking engagements. And I remember vividly when a kid said, you know what, Will, you're my favorite player. And I'm like, man, this kid's really trying hard to suck up to me, you know, or, dumb. And I, 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 or dumb. So <laughs> I said, you know, I told him, I was like, bro, I said, you know, you got Roy McIlroy who just um, won the U.S. Open. There's no way I could be your favorite player. And he said something to me that I'll never forget. He said, Roy would never come to my neighborhood. Mm. And so when he said that, I'm like, hmm. So that's kind of remind me of the days when I was on the couch and I used to watch Big Break. Albert Cruz, the cross guy from Louisiana. Uh, Brian Cooper, who's in Arizona. Isaac Sanchez, who's up uh, in, in San Francisco Bay Area. I used to watch these guys. Jay and McNair. All, Jay, Jay McNair, uh, the Shade Tree Pro down there in, in Florida. You know, And I used to always watch these guys and I looked up to them. So I, I think you don't know anything no more than you're exposed to it. If that's you right. don't see it, you can't follow it. So I re I'm really big on, on pushing uh, content, especially with uh, black and brown, to uh, have, have ways of growing this game. Yeah, no, that's right. That's why this is beyond the fairway and not beyond the green or the tee box. This is, we just beyond it all. But no, you hey, know but what? Shout out to Cheyenne, though, for coming in here. Shout, we love you. Uh, all the best to you. Um, and, Will, it's that time. It's that damn time, cuz. It is that damn time you know what time it is let me get it back because you had it last time let yeah me... <clears throat> I, was, I was so <clears throat> whack i was like hey let's go let's go what's the time i'm ready who's your shank of the week bro you know what <clears throat> I, I don't want to because i'm i'm pro usa especially in the golf space but i'm mm. giving my shank of the week to steve stricker you know why number one the guy's damn nickname is captain america and you didn't pick him. Steve Stricker did not pick Patrick Reed to play on this year's team. We all remember this. Patrick Reed to Roy McIlroy. We remember that. That was an iconic moment. But nope, not going to happen this year. But also, there's another reason why I'm giving it to Steve Stricker. Captain Stricker. No, no offense, no disrespect. Strick, comma. You picked too soon. You picked the team. Then you allowed Billy Horschel to hop, skip, and jump across the pond. Go out to the BMW Championship. Guess what he did, Will? Got the W, one of the best fields in golf, international golf. I liken it to the Players' Championship of the European Tour. Billy got the W, not on the team. We talked to him, Will. He told us how much it meant for him to be a part of his first Ryder Cup team. And Steve Stricker, you didn't even call him. There's a clip, I'm not gonna run it, but there's a clip of Billy winning his trophy, saying, you know what, I would have appreciated a call to tell me I'm not on the team. So you know what, Billy was juiced up. Went out there, used that fire that Will was talking about, that assholeness that he possesses, got himself a W. Congratulations, Billy Horschel. But Steve Stricker, shank of the week. And to add to your Steve Stricker, he beat two, well, he beat four of the people that are on the European uh, Ryder Cup team that are heading to Whistling Straits. I'm sorry to add to your shank of the week. Right. Show moment, I tell you what, he got some, some crooked whistles this week without them two boys. Exactly. You know, just, it ain't going to be straight whistling. It's you know, whistling. You know, Billy came through and had a good interview and just got me. He's got me emotion. I got a little heartstring with Billy. Uh, my my shame of the week. My shame of the week goes to Carol Crispino. Who the hell is now, Carol Crispino? Well, let me tell you, Doug. I'm glad you asked. Carol last week was arrested by driving drunk in a Yamaha golf cart on the Florida Turnpike. <laughs> She was trapped. She was sighted traveling 25 miles per hour on the on the Florida Turnpike. So the Florida uh, Highway Patrol pulled her over, and she she didn't have to really go into a lit a fully lit place because she felt safe. So that was good for her. She got she got pulled over, and she openly admitted that she had a few drinks, and the, she quickly obliged by providing a uh, some breath samples, and. Yeah. Breath. Breath samples. And she ended up blowing. She had a blood alcohol content of 0.15 and 0.157. The alcohol legal, legal limit is 0.08. <laughs> so this resident of the villages quickly got arrested. And she got bailed out the next morning. And I heard rumor that she made her tea time. So she went from the <laughs> she went from the she went from the cell block to the T box, and and she had a she had a jump shoot she had a jumpsuit with a collar, so the the course is like go ahead, so 
it was it was it was a good time for her. But uh, shout out to uh, Carol Crispino for rocking and driving my favorite golf cart of all time, the new 2021 Yamaha. <laughs> <laughs> Shake it a week. <laughs> Oh man, Miss Crispino, I don't know where the hell you was going or where you had to be, but um, <laughs> you spent a night in jail for it. Hey, that's all we got for y'all this week, Beyond the Fairway Podcast. Yeah. Man, be sure to listen, subscribe, share, let people know what we're doing out here. Will and I, always right here every week for your listening and viewing pleasure. If you listen, watch. If you watch, listen. But do both. Do both. You want to see these faces? You know, oh no, it's this way. You want to see these faces? It's all love. Hey, we'll be back next week. Ryder Cup, Will. Ryder Cup is coming up. Stricker's already got the shank of the week. I hope I don't have to give it to another team member. So we'll holla at y'all. Peace, love, hair grease. You had to say hair grease. No, I'm doing well. My hairline just cooking up under this this beanie. <laughs> hair grease. My Peace hairline. Hair grease. I feel my hairline leaving as we speak right now. <laughs> Your hairline got evicted. <laughs> My, my, my hairline would have crossed my my hairline would have crossed the pond. <laughs>